Following the November 20 provincial and parliamentary elections, sessions of the newly elected House of Representatives and the National Assembly commenced yesterday. Addressing the sessions, senior leaders of the parties have called for united efforts to ensure a successful term of the federal parliament. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal is all set for the floor test at the House of Representatives today to secure his hold on the top executive post. Good morning, I'm Abhude Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal set to receive the vote of confidence at the House of Representatives today. Nepali Congress and CPN Unified Socialist holding meeting to decide whether to support Dahal in the floor test. The session of the federal parliament begins. All eyes at the parliament to forge crucial laws at the earliest. Senior leaders highlight that the parliament has significant responsibilities. Around 1,500 people held in Brazil after supporters of ex-president Jair Bolsonaro stormed Congress, the presidential palace and the Supreme Court in the capital, Brasilia. An English Premier League club Arsenal advance into the fourth round of the FA Cup blanking Oxford United 3-0. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal is to take the vote of confidence from the House of Representatives today. Based on the Constitution sub-Article 2 of Article 76, Premier Dahal will propose for the confidence vote and address the session. Any lawmaker willing to speak on the confidence vote can do so by requesting time from the Speaker. Premier Dahal will answer questions raised by lawmakers, following which the voting will begin. After giving their votes for or against the Premier, the lawmakers will be given some time to change their decision if needed. Premier Dahal needs at least 138 votes from the 275-membered House of Representatives. CPN Mao Center Chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal was appointed the Prime Minister on 25th of December with the support of CPN UML, Rashtriya Prajantra Party, Rashtriya Swatantra Party, Nagrik Unmukti Party, Jarata Samajbadi Party, and three other independent lawmakers. He had the support of 169 lawmakers. Earlier yesterday, Dahal had met with Nepali Congress President Sher Bahadur Deuba regarding the latter's support for the confidence vote. CPN Unified Socialist has also called for its meeting today to decide on the same. The session of the federal parliament has begun from yesterday. The first meeting of the House of Representatives since the November 20 provincial and parliamentary elections was held yesterday. Addressing the first meeting of the House of Representatives, senior leaders of all the parties said that the current parliament had significant responsibilities. Addressing the House of Representatives, Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal said that the public had elected the members of the parliament with major responsibilities. Saying the public had great expectations from the parliament, Prime Minister Dahal called on all the parliamentarians to contribute in development and prosperity. Prime Minister Dahal said that his entire term would be focused on good governance and prosperity and added that national unity would be further strengthened by putting an end to discrimination. Also addressing the session, President of the largest party of the parliament and main opposition Nepali Congress, Sher Bahadur Deoba, called on all the state bodies to operate by following the norms of the constitution and existing legal arrangements. He added that it was the common objective of everyone to ensure peace, good governance, development and prosperity through the federal democratic republic system. Meanwhile, CPN UML Chairperson K.P. Sharma Oli stressed on working for political stability. He also defended his failed attempts at dissolving the previous House of Representatives. The journey of the new House of Representatives is not an easy one because of the share of seats in terms of political numbers. However, the list of works requiring completion is very long. Expressions of senior leaders of political parties at the lower house on the first day of the new parliament session yesterday has already hinted towards these challenges. This is the second term of the House of Representatives since the promulgation of the Constitution of Nepal in 2015. However, the parliament faces many challenges, including the prospect of change in political equation. Despite the challenges, the parliamentarians shouldered the, respons the significant responsibility of formulation of laws which the previous parliament had failed to deliver. With the Citizenship Act yet to be amended, the constitutional arrangements for citizenship are yet to be implemented. The bill had remained stranded for five years in the parliament before being held by the president in the last stage. 
The Civil Service Act also holds significance and needs to be concluded at the earliest. The management of employees has remained a challenge as the federal parliament has not formulated required laws. Laws related to province police have yet to be formulated as well. The impeachment motion against the former suspended Chief Justice filed during the previous term of the Parliament is also to be concluded. While the Parliament has many due works, the political situation has changed. The largest party of the Parliament, Nepali Congress, is in the opposition, while the third party, CPN Maoist Center, is leading the government. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal, who has the support of many parties, faces the challenge of addressing demands of all of them. The impact of such a requirement is certain to be seen in the parliament as well. In our public voice segment, we had asked people in several provinces what they expect from the parliament. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. Rakneuta <laughs> The ruling coalition has published the government's common minimum program, which emphasizes on the government addressing the issues of border encroachment by India in the Limpia Dhura, Lipulek and Kalapani region. The program was jointly published by the ruling coalition parties at a program held in Singadarwar yesterday. The announcement also includes government plans to provide medical allowances for those above the age of 60 years. During the event, Prime Minister Dahal said the program's implementation would begin within a month's time. The Common Minimum Program has aimed at ensuring access to education for all, improved quality of education and health for all. The ruling coalition has said in order to improve public services, time cards will be implemented in all public offices. Likewise, the government has announced of collaboration between public and private sector to revive industries that have been shut for various reasons. The program has also aimed for double-digit economic growth. The government has also expressed plans to provide 1,500 rupees to each woman of menstruating age to purchase sanitary products. Likewise, the government has aimed at expediting works of under-construction hydropower projects and enroll 6 million people in the secu social security program within five years. The Department of Immigration has begun preparations to furnish documents related to Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Home Affairs Ravi Lamichani, asked by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court on Friday had asked for details related to Deputy Prime Minister Lamichani from the Ministry of Home Affairs, Department of Immigration, District Administration Office and Nepal Police for the hearing on the case filed against him. Based on the court's order, the department has begun preparations to furnish all documents and details, including the visa and passport used by Lamichane while returning from the United States of America. Based on the correspondence of the department to the press council on 20th of December 2018, Lamichane had arrived in Nepal with an American passport on a relations visa issued to kins of Nepali citizens. Saying a regular hearing in the case against Home Minister Lamichani is to be held on 25th of January, the Supreme Court had asked to provide all the documents within one week. A total of 247 banking and financial institutions, BFIs, have merged following the decision of the Nepal Rashtra Bank to create financial institutions capable of investing in large-scale projects. With the deadline for eligibility for Nepal Rashtra Bank's benefits to organizations going into mergers drawing close, the trend of mergers between F BFIs has increased. The Nepal Rashtra Bank had introduced benefits for BFIs going into mergers by mid-January 2023. With the deadline approaching close, the numbers of merging BFIs has increased. Global IME Bank and Bank of Kathmandu merged yesterday and begun transactions under the name of Global IME Bank. With this, Global IME has become the largest bank of the country in terms of capital. 
Prabhu Bank is merging with Century, while Nepal Investment Bank Limited is set to merge with Mega Bank. The Nepal Rashtra Bank had implemented the policy for mergers following unhealthy competition among a huge number of BFIs in the country. The Nepal Rashtra Bank has given a 1% discount on the spread rate and increased the loan term by one year for the merging entities. If the credit to deposit or the CD ratio crosses 90%, it cannot be corrected within one year period, while permission is required for merging and shutting down the branches. The BFIs have been attracted by mergers also because of the facility on the six-month cooling period for operators and high-ranking officials. Prior to the introduction of the policy for mergers, there were 303 BFIs and cooperatives, while the number has now reduced to 122. The number of commercial banks has reduced from 32 to 24, development banks from 92 to 17, and finance companies have reduced from 78 to 17. Mergers were promoted by the central bank as unhealthy competition had increased between the BFIs. With the mergers, capacities of BFIs to invest in large-scale projects has increased as well. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Here's the question. What do you term the recent mergers of commercial banks? Your options are A, success of the central bank's policy, B, compulsion of the banks, and C, accumulating capital. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Rescue of the 19 Nepali nationals held hostage in Malaysia since nine days has begun. Following a directive from Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal, the manpower company that sent them to Malaysia for employment and Nepal embassies Embassy in Malaysia has begun rescuing those stranded Nepalese. All 19 Nepali nationals have been held hostage for the past nine days in a single room of a building in Kelan city of Malaysia. They had urged authorities for rescue through social media. Koji Manpower Company of Sanepa Kathmandu had sent the Nepalese to work in a chicken suppliers company on 8th of September. The 19 stranded Nepalese can choose to either continue working there or return home. Sports News. Janakpur Royals are facing Biratnagar Super Kings in the Qualifier 2 match of Nepal T20 League today to secure a place in the final to clash against Lumini All Stars. The match is scheduled to start at 12 noon at the Thiruvan University Cricket Ground in Kirtipur. Biratnagar Super Kings had progressed to the Qualifier 2 match, securing an impressive 99-run win over Kathmandu Knights in yesterday's Eliminator match. Meanwhile, Janakpur Royals are playing in the Qualifier 2 match after suffering a narrow 6-run loss to Lumini All-Stars on Sunday. In the two league matches played between these two teams, Janakpur had registered wins in both the matches. Janakpur had chalked out a 49-run win in the first match and a 5-wicket victory in the second match. The title decider of the Nepal T20 League will be played tomorrow. The Nepali outfit DRS Gaming that finished as runners-up in the Pugji World Cup winning 292,000 US dollars has returned home. Kathmandu Mayor Balan Shah received the proud team at the Thiruvan International Airport yesterday evening. Hundreds of fans were also present as they arrived at the airport. DRS Gaming had defeated 49 teams from around the world to become the runners-up. This is the biggest achievement for any Nepali team in eSports. In the tournament held in Jakarta, Indonesia, DRS Gaming earned 158 points from 18 matches to finish second, which is 32 points less than winners S2G of Turkey. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.